Hey everybody, welcome to today's stream. Uh, if you tuned into the earlier one on, on YouTube, uh, sorry about the, the uh, technical difficulties and, and things that I was having. I just didn't realize I set the stream up the wrong way. So let me know that we are in the right place and everything's going well, because <laughs> I messed up last time. Uh, so for anybody that joined in the fun, we did finish up the little patron chat. It was really fun. Uh, so again, thank you to all the patrons that showed up uh, to that chat and uh, listened and had some ideas. And, uh, and going forward, we'll have some, some fun stuff going on in, over on Patreon. So uh, for everybody today here, uh, Cody just got here in time. Nice. Yeah, I kind of messed up. I this was supposed to start at three, <laughs> but uh, we I messed up the. Uh, it was it was kind of crazy if you didn't see what happened earlier. So anyway, uh, today what we're gonna do is make some handle blanks uh, using mini pine cones as well as uh, glitter. Uh, I I don't remember ever doing this before. Uh, maybe I have, but I wanted to see it again. Uh, if I have, if I had done it already, I don't think I have. So I thought glitter plus mini pine cones, I don't know, should be kind of fun. And so the, the idea for this project actually came from my, uh, I have a saw stop table saw that doesn't matter. I have a table saw, let's just say. And, uh, it has a, you know, like the T fence, T square, whatever fence, and you know it's got this little handle and it's ugly it's it's usable it's it's got a nice you know kind of rubbery grip but i'm like man i could totally make a custom handle for this so that's what kind of prompted this idea for today so we're going to be doing the casting today uh, make a handle i'm going to make a few extras uh, two of those are going to go into the the two mystery box folks uh, but we're going to have two other ones that will probably go into down the road mystery boxes when they get unleashed. Uh, but so for, for the super chats today, if you want to pick the glitter color that we put, uh, we got four of these guys. So one of the fun things about the mystery box people is you're actually picking colors for the mystery boxes. Uh, so you're, 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 you're the mystery box folks. Uh, their, their life is in your hands. <laughs> so, um, uh, we got four of them. So we'll have, uh, we got, you know, openings for four super chats and, and you guys get to pick whatever color, uh, as long as I have it, uh, glitter you want, uh, to go with the pine cones. So I thought that'd be kind of fun today. And then for mine, I'm going to be making, I, I, I need to get a two, I, well, yeah, I, I think I really want to get a two inch handle going. I only have one of these though. So the other ones are going to be inch and a half. But uh, uh, I'm going to make mine kind of the same colors. Uh, I'm going to go with the red glitter for mine just because it's going to go on my saw. So I thought I'd pick it. Ah, here, here's the deal. If we get five, if we get five super chats, you get to pick the color that my handle is. Um, so let's say the fifth one. Um, if we get the fifth one, you get to pick the handle color on my saw stop. So I got to live with that thing. <laughs> That'll be kind of fun, I think. So anyway, hopefully everybody's doing good today. It's Wednesday and uh, I'm excited because we actually get to go to Mexican food tonight because my, my wife's birthday was last week, sort of, or a few days ago, yeah, last week. No, well, over the weekend. And uh, uh, we're, we're gonna be celebrating with my parents, so I cannot wait for, uh, have you ever had table side guacamole where they like make it in front of you? Oh my God, it's amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's just random fun. So uh, let's see. So what is everybody working on in their shops? Let me know. I'll try and keep my eyes peeled on the, the, the chat window. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the Sony cam, the overhead deal. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. Um, so I have lots of these different glitters. I usually get my glitters from Glitter Hippo. They got quite a few choices. There's lots of other places you can get them. This is just, they kind of have this uh, tinsely looking, well, they call it now sprinkle glitter, I guess. Uh, but they have these things and these are, you know, what I use in my sprinkle blanks. So I, I, and I just randomly, I actually opened these up for the, the, the photo for, for today's thumbnail. Uh, but I have like every color pretty much like I have green, blue, gold. Um, what else? Green, blue, gold, orange and pink, green, blue, orange, pink, red. Um, Let's see, purple, silver, gold. I mean, they got everything. Ooh, we got some super chats already. Whoa, it's, sorry, I closed that thing and it shook the camera. 
Uh, so we got Lelia wants purple. Connie also wants purple. Do you want to um, just to, so do, do, Connie, do you want to change it? Um, we have maybe I can find a different kind of purple. I have one that's kind of an interesting, weird. Uh, where'd that go? Oh, so I have silver as well. Found that. I have one that's so. How about this for for Connie? It's got purple in it, but it's got a, a like blue a little bit too. Let me know, Connie, if that'll work for you. That's uh, this one. I don't I don't use this. As, it would be kind of new to me. Let's see here. Steve's not knocking everybody out. Nice. How's it going? Christmas ornaments. Nice. It's a little early for that, but if you got a lot to do, nice. David's making a lot of D. I'm not sure what that means. A lot of, I don't know where we're, what D is. Uh, which restaurant? Uh, it's one in Carson City. Uh, it's called San Marcos Grill. It's a really good place. They have like interesting um, options. It's it's. I don't know, you know, around here, there's lots of good Mexican food places, but a lot of times they kind of all kind of do the same, pretty similar things. Um, so this one has some different options that are pretty good. Um, I think it's, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say that it's a little more authentic, but, <laughs> you know, they have different options, basically. It's, uh, I would say that they have, like, healthier options, too, which is kind of odd. So it's pretty good, pretty good place. And they do the table side guac thing. It's pretty awesome. You're not making anything today. Oh, that's no fun. Never too early. <laughs> How's it going, Dave? All right, so again, we got uh, four. We're gonna, we got, well, technically five. Five blanks, we're gonna do handles. These are all just PVC pipes. You can just use the, the stuff that you can get at like Home Depot or you know whatever, the, the hardware store locally. The white stuff, it works fine. I like using the clear. I only had so many clear ones though. Uh, and I have links on my website where you, where I get this stuff if you really need clear for some reason. It, in some cases, it really is kind of, you really need it to be able to see what's going on for certain types of projects. But for most things, you can just use the, the white ones and they're cheaper, a lot cheaper. So just to let you know. And then these guys are the greatest things in sliced bread. <laughs> oh, I was on the wrong camera. Sorry guys. So we got, we got four. Four one and a half inch guys. Two of these are going to go in the, the two mystery box folks. This one's mine. I just needed a little bit bigger and I only have one of these two inch PVC pipes off right now. Um, but we're going to be, I'm going to be recreating this handle. Um, so the fifth super chat gets to pick the color of my handle. All right. So that'll give you guys incentive to, uh, sort of to, <laughs> to dive in. Um, and then anyway, what I was saying is these plugs are the bee's knees. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go grab a link to those at Turner's Warehouse, cause Chad came out with a brilliant idea. These things are the greatest. Um, before we had these plugs, so you could get like the tapered silicone plugs. Those were, you know, you could get those online places. But the problem is, the larger the diameter, the less it would stay in. <laughs> like you would put it in the pressure pot and the thing would come out in the middle of casting. Not, got, not a good idea. So you had to like tape that on and it was just a pain. Um, and then Chad came out with these guys. Well, the other way that I would do it is I would put like 50 tape pieces over that. That was not awesome. Or you could also glue it down to a piece of HDPE again that's just clunky you got to sit there and glue it not fun so chad came out with these plugs that are flat that don't come out and they just rock so here's a link to those oh hold on a minute that's not the right link i'm putting a link in the in the chat and i'll put one down in the show notes later too should have done this ahead of time sorry about that but I want to make sure if anybody wants one of these or, and they have like, um, I, th I think they have from like, I want to say half inch all the way up to four inch and maybe even bigger ones possibly. They might even have a six inch. I don't know. 
I might I might get a little bit worried at six inches. Um, you know, bigger four inch works fine. I would be maybe a little worried because you got so much weight depending on how big that blank is, and even with the four inch ones, um, watch out. You know, you don't want to pick it up and have the the weight of it pu push the plug out. But uh, here we go. There's the link. Nice, Lori. Whoa. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. That's a big one. Let's see here. So you wanted pink. Okay, so we got a we got a really good pink. I like this pink. Sticky sweet is what this one's called. So we got pink, we got purple. Let's see, just is Connie good with the the one that we came up with? Cody wants orange. Let's see. Okay, so I think yeah, I think Unless I'm wrong, I think Connie's good with that one. We got a purple for, let's see here, for Lelia. That's right. Cody wants orange. And this one's called Candy DMs. I thought that was funny. And what do we got here? The last one, I can't read it on my screen. What color do you want? Onomatopoeia. Shop shut down till you get a new air conditioner. Oh man, where do you? Is it hot right now? David's working on a video. Nice, sweet. I'll have to check it out. This off-camera stuff. <laughs> Matt's setting up the shop. Nice. Lelia got in. Okay, so let's see here. Turning the results of two blanks. Sweet, that's so fun. I love it when people get started. So we need a color. Red, okay. Yeah, I thought you might go for something kind of crazy, but you went with, so we got, uh, this one's called strawberry. So I'll, I'll let you know which what colors these are. I think, I don't know if this one's even available anymore. They might've gotten rid of it. Um, but this one is Big City Nights. It's kind of like a blue purple, kind of an interesting one. Um, Sticky Sweet is the pink one. Don't be jelly is the purple. Candy DMs is the orange. And then strawberry syrup is the the red one. And uh, so glitterhippo.com is where I get these. They got all kinds of different glitters. Uh, they may not be, I'm gonna tell you right now, they're probably, you could probably find something similar for cheaper somewhere. Um, but it's one of those things that I know what I'm kind of getting with this. I don't have to like, test it out and do all that stuff um, and i know it works in resin so i pay a little bit more just because whatever but um they're not too expensive i don't think um sometimes you can buy things on like aliexpress and it's it's a lot cheaper though you know um, but i think that uh glitter hippo is probably pretty comparable to like you know, if you see someone selling these something like this on Etsy, it's probably about the same price. During the day, oh yeah. <laughs> it's gonna stay red. Nice. Pink. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. So let's see here. That's true. Highest, highest maybe should have been the, <laughs> that's a funny, I need to learn how to game the system on these super chats guys and extract all the money. <laughs> I don't think about that. I'm like, I don't know, pick a color. I'm a great business person. I'm like it's free, whatever. All right. So let's, uh, let's do, let's just get mine out of the way first. How about that? Uh, so this thing is two inches. First of all, first off, if you're going to be casting, I'm going to switch to the double view, double cam. So you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit. Now I'm going to go off screen here in, in a second, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this pretty well. Uh, you don't necessarily need it like dripping with mold release, you know, but you want to cover it. I usually come in and just kind of, you know, move it around a little bit and then I actually flip it because that way you get both of those ends covered nicely and it'll pop right out. And this works, this uh, stoner urethane. Technically, this is meant for urethane resins, but I find that this works just fine. 
if you don't want to have to go get a different one for uh, epoxy, it works on epoxies, every epoxy I've used. Now, another way that you could go that's a pretty good one, and I mean, there's a billion different mold releases, but um, these are two that I get from uh, Alumalite. I haven't used this a whole lot, but this is pretty interesting because it'll work for anything, including silicone to resin, silicone to silicone, and resin to resin. All right, so um, this thing will cover all your needs, but it is a little different. It's got a, you know, it's like a rattle can style. And I think that you kind of need to put a little bit more on than this in some cases. I'm just, I'm a little bit worried. I don't, I don't use that a lot. I'm just used to this one and it works fine for most of what I do, but they both work pretty well, I think. Every time I've used the universal mold release one, it worked fine. Um, but I'm just a little, sometimes I, I don't want to get blanks stuck <laughs> in, in PVC pipes and things, you know. Um, but I think if it's a case, I don't know, more, more testing needs to be done. I should maybe use it <laughs> today. But anyway, and then you just pop this guy in. One, one little thing that I recommend you do is on your PVC pipe, you know, you can cut it to whatever length you want, but that inside edge can be pretty, um, pretty sharp. And with these silicone plugs, if you don't, I would recommend taking a file or a piece of sandpaper and just kind of knocking down that edge. Because what ends up happening is if you don't, you kind of damage you know, these are like the first ones that I ever used. And it was, be this happened because the edge in my pipes was like super sharp and I would cut it putting it in. So to keep these things and that, I mean, it still works, but you know, to keep them perfect, um, just, you know, give your, your edges in your pipe, which I actually probably need to do that on this one, but um, just file that down so it's not sharp, all right? So before we begin, I'm, I'm just gonna get all these sprayed so that I don't, forget or you know forget <laughs> mainly so they're ready to go when i am and so uh let's see we got four and yeah, we got five colors that'll be fun i love mini pine cone blanks i don't know if you guys can tell i really like making those things though one of my faves And I'm, I'm pretty much a fan of glitter too. I don't know about you guys. Glitter's pretty sweet. I remember the first time I used glitter in resin, you know, like in blanks or something. I was like, I don't know, glitter, really? And then they came out of the pressure pot and I turned one and I was like, yep, glitter. Boom. It's so sparkly. I love it. Okay, so yeah, I, the stoner, the urethane. Now, I will say that there's a stoner, um, there's another stoner. Stoner is a company. Um, so, you know, the pink one is the urethane mold release. And like I said, it works fine for uh, epo every epoxy that I've tried it on, as well as it's meant for Alumalite Clear Slow. That's a urethane resin. So it's kind of more formulated for urethane, but it works fine on, on epoxy. This one is called Thermoset Mold Release, and it's a little bit more for like epoxy is kind of, I guess. But this stuff is horrible. This is just grease. This is like spraying butter all over the place, and it's just messy and disgusting, and it smells. And so I don't really recommend buying that. Um, both of these are a little bit less greasy and work pretty well, but I usually just pull this out because I've been using it for so long. Um, but anyway, I, I really don't like that th the thermoset one. The yellow stoner is terrible stuff. I mean, I would have thrown that can away, but I use it to show people I don't recommend buying this. <laughs> you know, this one kind of sucks. Yeah, the sparkle, I'm telling you, it's so cool. It's blingy blinging it up okay so we got our pipe see how easy that is oh my god you just pop it in there um well so let's do mine first get that out of the way so that's a two inch pvc pipe so i'm going to do a little bit of calculating i don't know offhand how much resin that's going to take i'm going to guess 
like 300 grams maybe. Um, but I'm also gonna fill it with a bunch of mini pine cones. So we, I've, I've been baking these guys in the oven for honestly for actually a few days. That's just the way that I do things. I don't have to weigh it or worry. Um, I think that for like a mini pine cone type size thing, typically un maybe unless you pulled it you just literally went outside and picked one up and it was like buried in snow and like you know waterlogged or something um but if you like i end up buying these a lot of times from from you know dealers online there's uh one place to find this type of thing flowers and pine cones and stuff is the um like floral arrangement um websites that sell stuff for floral ar arrangements they have dried things now, I don't think these were dried by them, but they're fairly dry. They're not like, I just went outside and picked one up. And I mean, I think you could probably put these in the oven for, you know, a, an hour or two and be pretty much guaranteed that you're good. Now, the one thing that can kind of change some of this is if you're in like, you know, Florida and it's like a thousand percent humidity right now, um, and these have been sitting out, they may have a lot more moisture in them. And so you may want to, you know, just make sure, leave it in there a little longer. Um, but put it in the oven, leave it on for, or crank it up to, you know, there's different ways to do it because I leave them in there for so long. I usually just, it doesn't need to be super high temperature necessarily. But typically when you're drying things out, it's better to be above 212 degrees Fahrenheit because then the, that's the boiling point. And so the, it'll turn into, like, it'll evaporate quicker, basically. So, anyway. All right. So, let's see here. Just a heads up. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. I actually, I know. I, I was like, oh, it's probably 3816. It looks like that. And I tried to stick a 3816 bolt in there, and it didn't work. So, I, I did go and get um, M10 by 1.5. Um, I don't know how long. I'm just going to cut this thing off. Um, I didn't. They only had this length. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and what I'm going to do, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain this a little bit more down the road, but um, I'm just going to cut this off. <clears throat> and when I'm done with the blank, I'm just going to drill a hole in the middle and glue this thing in there. I think that'll be the easiest way to go. And uh, yeah. I also bought a black, I don't know which way I'm going to go. I also bought, I don't know what the difference is. I also bought socket cap size or style. It's like black oxided or something. I, I don't know which, I don't know if it matters which one I use. If anybody has any thoughts about that, let me know. I don't, I really don't think it matters. <laughs> it's not a hundred percent at the moment. <laughs> That's funny, Rich. Yeah, you got to watch that. I, I'll tell you that I love the fact that I live in the, a dry climate for resin it's just i don't have to worry about any of this stuff and drying things out is quicker okay so one times one times 3.14 i'm just doing some calculations here real quick 3.14 times like i need about six times 0.554 times 30 yeah so we're looking at about i think to get a six inch blank 300 grams should probably do it hopefully um if you need to do a calculation there's a there's an online calculator at, at alumalite.com uh, look under uh, learn i think or something in the menu or you can just search for for a calculator actually you can just google search alumalite volume calculator and it'll take you there so let's get this guy going here uh let me get a cup you guys are yeah, you can see the, you can see everything good, and we're going to be using the strawberry syrup one for the red. I don't, I don't exactly know how much we're going to put in there, but we'll load it up. Okay, so zero in my scale out. Did I miss any? Yeah, stainless steel. I just wanted to run down. The thing was, I wasn't sure what the thread pitch was, so I just went and bought bolts to to test it, and these these worked. I couldn't really find info about what it was on Sauce Stop's website. <laughs> you know, I looked up like the manual. All right, so I'm using Alumalite Clear Slow. It's a urethane resin, it's a one-to-one -one mixture, and you have to measure it by weight, have to, okay? You don't, you don't pull out a volume measurement cup and 
you know, put equal parts in. It's not going to work with this resin. Um, just be advised though, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of resins that sound the same. So Alumalite Clear Slow or just Alumalite Clear, those are both by weight. Amazing Clear Cast, which sounds kind of similar, uh, that's totally different. That's an epoxy. And that one you need to do by volume. <laughs> okay, so weight is not going to work. So make sure that you know you know whatever resin you're using read the directions on the bottle and make sure you know how you need to measure it because it is very important if you don't measure it correctly using the correct method uh, you can get failed failed um, castings uh, it can be sticky gooey um, bendy uh, you know so oh, I gotta write some notes down. I usually write notes down guys totally forgot about the notes Let's see if my pen works I think the battery died oh i've been having some issues with this thing huh. i don't know technology these days doesn't work okay so we are doing let's see today is 323 And we're doing mini pine cones and glitter. So number one is a two inch red. We're using a two inch PVC pipe and we're using Alumilite Clear Slow. We're gonna use 300 grams total. That's 150 part A, 150 part B. And we are going to add pine cones into our tube and the pine cones are going to take up space, so I th I'm thinking we're going to have two, you know, more resin than we need. Uh, just to let you know, I think that's probably going to be over, but I'd rather be over than under. And let's see here. And then we're going to put the strawberry syrup glitter. And I'm going to come back and write a note as to how much I actually put in there. I don't necessarily need to load it up too much, but... Oh, a mandrel. 40 bucks. I'll just glue it in and... <laughs> uh, you know what I think I'll do? Actually, here's, here's my game plan. I don't know. Again, I'm not, I'm not a turning genius, but I think what I might do is you don't need a lot, you know, the entirety of this. Like, you only need, like, a little bit sticking out. Um, so I think what I can do is grab it... Um, you know, cut the cut the head off. I could maybe even leave the head on. I could probably grab it with this after I glue this in. I could probably just grab it with the hex bolt on my lathe with my drill chuck, or or I guess maybe even four jaw chuck possibly. Um, and just turn. I'll probably just turn it that way. It's probably good enough. If I if I have tailstock support, that should work. I'm not making a mandrel for one blank for 40 bucks. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I know. What the heck is going on with my pen? I've had, this thing has been, I'm probably going to have to buy another one. These things are really expensive, but they are pretty handy, I will say. So this, this is a digital pen that like records what I'm writing um, and then backs it up in the cloud. But that's not really working. Hmm. It's been plugged in for like days. All right, so the zero zeroed it out. We're gonna go for some part B now. Hundred hundred and fifty grams of part B. Sneaking up on her. I like the scale better than volume measurements usually. It's just, I know for sure. It's telling me that it's 150 grams, you know. Sometimes those lines and stuff, I don't know. Especially on small amounts, that's where I don't really like it for volume, but, you know. All right, so we're mixing it up. Getting the sides of this cup real good.
Ricky's here. What's up? Joining the fun. Making some pine cone and glitter blanks. So I need to drop some pine cones in my blank here or in my mold. So again, these guys have been uh, baking for quite a while now. So I think what I might do, so we, we're only doing like one color, uh, you know, of glitter, let's say. Um, but I think I'm just gonna put a little bit in there and then pour some and then and then kind of go up as, I don't know. What, what I don't want is to fill this thing totally and then most of the glitter gets kind of trapped like on the pine cones at the top for some reason. I, I don't know if that's gonna happen. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that would happen, but uh, I'm also gonna put a drop of red dye in here just just because we're not going to load it up with glitter so much that you know it's it's otherwise it'll just be kind of clear where there's no glitter so let's add a little just a little bit of color to the resin just one drop that's all and then let's start with i'm gonna i do want to kind of load this up i don't know that we need an entire package you know this is a, a, a single teaspoon, one teaspoon. So let's do like one, two, and just let's look at it. See what this looks like. Once we mix it in, I think that'll probably be pretty good. So I don't know if I can really show you guys what's what it looks like, but you can kind of see in there. I don't know, that's not a very great shot pretty densely I don't know I don't really have a good side camera view maybe I can look up in the top corner the little the little one I don't know if that's <laughs> I have no clue if I'm even on yeah that looks pretty dense I don't know let's 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 see what two teaspoons I, I think that should probably work for these cups okay so pour it in and you know we don't really need to wait for anything for any you know temperature or anything like that um, that only applies if you're trying to like mix colors together without them bleeding or if you're trying to like suspend objects now this glitter is not really going to go anywhere i don't think it's it could sink or it could float but i think that this glitter should probably be okay um, without really worrying too much. I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Now that I think about it, I usually do wait. So, uh, let's, let's just, let's wait a little bit because this is like way runny right now. And the glitter could, could kind of fall to the bottom of this mold. It's not really going anywhere, but I think we're better off waiting. If I was just doing like one color of dye, you know, that's not going to go anywhere. Um, but this glitter could kind of move. I, I didn't really think about that when I was talking about that. So let's, let's wait on this a little bit.
All right, so you can probably hear me on my webcam. I think I'm going to have to go in and mess around with the mic. Yeah, we're having some fun today. The live streaming uh, stuff is not really working in my favor. Technical difficulty day, but I get Mexican food, so I don't care. Mike, let's see here. Uh, which one is this? One? Okay, okay, I think, I think the, the other, other mic. mic. Oh man, the sound is not bad. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Let me just get this pour done, and I can fix this mic problem. So we're at like ninety-two point five, still pretty thin. I'm gonna wait just a second. Um, but I think. My mic failure. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, let me uh, let me try something else. I think I have a because I, I, I have because I have another good mic. Good mic. Yeah, there we go. There we go. How about, How about there, there, hold on. There we go. Is it? It seems really low. Hmm. Let me know, yeah, Mexican food. Let me know if that's too low volume. It, pro it looks like it really is. Hmm. All right, so let's pour this. I'm gonna move on here. What I get for not charging my mic. All right, so it's looking good. It's a little taller than I needed, but uh, I'm going to kind of show you guys on this. That's looking pretty sweet. And so the cool thing is because we're not adding like a ton of color, you're going to have so much depth to be able to see in there and see the different pine cones. And, and you can adjust the, the amount of glitter that you put in. Also, you know, I, I did, this is pretty loaded up, but you're, you'll be able to see in there a little bit more on the glitter. Uh, but you can put a little less glitter in there and you'll see more pine cones. So you can adjust that up and down. Here, I'm going to switch to the other um, microphone because it's just not, that's that's about as high as I can get it for right now. Problem is I can't change the settings on that other one. So let me get this thing, let me get this thing rolling here and then. I think what I'm going to, well, you guys can't hear me. <laughs> on the wrong mic. One of those days. I'm gonna plug in my other mic. The problem is I can't go in and change all the settings because it's gonna really screw everything else up. All right. Well, okay, I, I can do it. Hold on a minute. We can do it. I just have to write down what, what the numbers were. Let's see. Okay, so the gain was 10. All right, hold, bear with me just a little bit, guys. And we're going to turn this thing up that didn't help at all hello no
All right, All right so, so that still, that still isn't, isn't high enough. enough. What the, what heck, the heck is going on there? there? Huh. huh. Let's turn that thing off, and that didn't help. Huh. Let's try that. All right, so now can you guys hear me? Is it too loud? Let me know if it's too loud. Is it, it's not echoing anymore, is it? That looks like it's getting close. That's as high as I can get this thing to go. Is it? It's it, actually it still looks low, huh? Hmm. Is that okay? So that's good enough. Okay, so we'll 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 move on. <laughs> I will charge my my other microphone. Okay, so the next one, let's see, we're gonna do. Let's let's try to do two at a time. We could maybe even do more than that, but the way things are going today, I'd rather just screw up two than four. <laughs> so I'm gonna put these pine cones back in the oven for now. Uh, okay, so the next ones that we got going on. Sorry about the man. Some days, the technical difficulties just hamper you, don't they? I'm really bummed about this pen. What the heck is going on with this thing? It's really annoying. Okay, so number three and four. Let's see. Number, number one. Number two is. Let's see. We got. Lelia with purple and Connie with purple. So we got a couple purples. So we got purple. Uh, and then for this one, for the original purple was going to be don't be jelly. Don't be jelly. And then number three is, and we're doing one and a half inch PVC pipes here. Also purple. Um, but we're going to use something a little different. Um, I don't. This one might have been discontinued on Glitter Hippo. Um, you should be able to find the Don't Be Jelly uh, and all the other ones that we were using. But this one, I think, might be discontinued. Um, but it's called Big City Nights. Sometimes they just come out with these like blend colors that they only have for like a little while. So. Okay, and then. We're using slow set clear for each one of these guys. And let's see here. So now we're doing one and a half. So I'm going to redo the calculation. I don't think that we don't need 300 grams for these. Um, they're only about six inches tall. So I'm running through a calculation real quick and I'm doing the, the radius pi times the radius pi r squared. We got that times 3.14 times, uh, and then I want to do the, the height, so about six inches. And then I'm going to multiply it by 0.554, and then I'm going to multiply it by 30. And that's looking like 176 for each one of these guys. I'm going to estimate 200 just because I was just doing calculations real quick on the fly, and that's an even number, so... We might have some extra, that's fine. Okay. So we got our calculations set. We got our glitters, we got our molds. Let's get this going. What are you guys talking? It sounds like I'm talking in Spanish. Are you kidding? It doesn't work?
Oh, is it too high now? Oh, I see. Were you just messing with me? You're just messing with me? Don't... Oh, man, you guys are you guys are getting me today. That's what I get, though. It's been a while since you guys razzed me a little bit. I deserve a little razzing, huh? Okay, so we got two of these guys at 200 grams each, so 400. I think we should be able to fit 400, 200. No, that's not going to work in this. Um, let's get a bigger cup. What do you think? I think I'm going to have to go with the... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with the, with the paint mixing cup size. All right, so we're doing two at a time. Zero it out. Is the sound too... It sounds perfect now? Okay. <laughs> Hit the sap button. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, good. I was like, it sounds like Spanish. Like, now I'm baffled at this point. I don't know what... The <laughs> I give up. I give up. Uh, all right, so we've zeroed the scale out, and we're going to add uh, 200 grams of part A. So we're doing two blanks. Oh, man. Like I said, I, all I'm thinking about is I got Mexican food later. Doesn't matter what happens on the stream. <laughs> I'm still going to get table side guac, unless they're out of guacamole. There was like a, a, an avocado uh, shortage for a while, so I just hope that I don't show up and they don't have table side guac. Oh, man. As long as they got cheese and chips, I'll be okay. So anybody excited about baseball starting up finally? They finally uh, negotiated out. We're pretty big baseball fans, Gretchen and I. So we're pretty excited. I'm not a huge fan of spring training. I think it'd be fun to go to a game, but I don't care about the games themselves really. But we're excited for baseball, it's fun. Something stronger than water. <laughs> I know. Whiskey. Okay, so we got two. I went a little over on that one. We're okay, though. All right, so we got our resin. I'm going to get a little cup ready for the other. We're going we're gonna to divide. This is all of it for both, both the, the pipes, for both blanks. Red Sox. Nice. We are Dodger fans. That'll probably piss off a lot of people. <laughs> I know that, like, there's certain teams that people are, like, most people, you know, like, I think with the Dodgers, there's there's very few people that are just, like, neutral. They don't really care. Like, if they're, you know, baseball fans, I think it's kind of like a love or hate. Yankees is another one. I think Boston actually is another one of those. Like, there's not, you know, like, there's a lot of people, like, Colorado Rockies. I mean whatever most people are just like yeah they have a team in colorado <laughs> you know like, it's not a big deal but there's certain teams that just make people mad but uh my my uh uncle and grandma they lived in la and so he was a big you know every every team la fan so i i became one And we would visit them, so, you know, we would actually be able to go see games when we were down there, like, you know, uh, summer vacations when I was a kid. So, we just... Living where I do in northern Nevada, most people up here are Giants fans, which is kind of funny, because I'm the opposite. But I think it's also kind of funny, because everyone's like, oh, that's the local team, and I'm like, that's five hours away. Like, that's not really... I mean, you could be a Seattle fan, and it really wouldn't make much difference with the how far you have to go. <laughs> so, all right. So zeroing this this scale out. What I'm going to do is dump uh, 200 grams in this guy, and this will be one of the pipes. It's been pretty exciting, you know. Whether you love or hate the Dodgers, the last few years, man, have been a trip.
Um, and I will say, actually, Rich, um, the, the year that the Dodgers played Boston in the World Series, man, that Boston team looked – I mean, I was, you know, like about halfway through that, that World Series, I was like, we are not going to win this. And it was one of those things that a lot of people might get kind of mad at, like the team, you know, they're like, oh, I hate the, the Red Sox, they beat us. I got to be honest, the Red Sox just came in, took care of business, and left professionally. Like they were just – it was one of the that – that was a team, so – I was pretty impressed by that team. So we're going to add a little bit of purple. So I want to share just a little tip trick thing. Um, so what I'm going to do in this one, I'm just going to do a drop. Okay, right? We're going to add some purple to this one. And I'm hopefully going to be able to show, like, the color, you know, the, the shade of this, what's going on. I like to, I always, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily recommend or say this a lot, but give you, if you add a little bit of dye, give it a good stir. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get it fully, um, you know, fully integrated or whatever. Let me get my hand out of the way. So we got some purple and that's pretty dark, right? So, uh, with the alumalite dyes, they're really strong. Um, they're, it's, it's a pretty concentrated dye. There's a lot of pigment in it. And so a lot of times what I'll do, if you just want to sneak up on like a light color, just add a like a, a little, you know, pinprick basically. There's like barely, this is a toothpick, you know, barely anything on there. If you just want to add a little bit of color, and I might have even gone a little too much right there. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's even still, you know, fairly dark, but... It's, it's, it's a lot lighter than the other one was. Like, it's see-through. You can see my fingers going, you know. Now, I know this cup is not totally see-through, but this stuff is pretty dark right here, you know, with one drop for 200 grams where, I mean, a pinprick, and, I mean, that's definitely purple, right? So I just wanted to mention that. If you're, if you're just trying to get that really transparent, see-through, stained glass look, add just a tiny pinprick um, and, and sneak up on that, that color, uh, especially with the alumalite dyes. Now, uh, alcohol inks are totally different. They are super not concentrated. There's nothing in it barely. So you can effectively dump the whole bottle in there. I don't recommend that. But, and it's really not going to get very dark or anything. It's not going to add a whole lot. So I just wanted to kind of mention that, some interesting things with dyes. So we got the Don't Be Jelly. I'm going to put that in the dark one, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good color. I do like, I don't, let's, let's, uh, so on the dark one, let's do the two teaspoons. Well, we don't need two. Let's do one teaspoon. It's a smaller blank, so we really don't need as much, like less resin, you know. So let's just do one teaspoon. See what we're looking like. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. It's, it's maybe a little hard to see in there, sort of. My hand out of the way. But I think it'll be good. We're just adding some a little bit of bling to that. And then on this one, I'm actually gonna let's 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 kind of another thing, you know, I just was talking about sneaking up on the, the colors. Okay, so let's drop down to a quarter teaspoon. So a fourth of what I just put in the other one. And let's, you know, let's let's do that. Okay, so we put a quarter in. Let's let's see what that looks like. If you're not really sure how much you need then you know and i mean this is obvious advice but you know just kind of try to sneak up on it now that's pretty sparse like i don't that's i, I know it looks on the camera like i reasonable but there's really not much glitter in there i don't like that at all so let's go another quarter so now we're doing half as much as that other one and i think this might be enough what i'm going for is kind of transparent on this a little bit more see-through and i think that's pretty good um, the problem is this cup, I would go over to the other camera and try and show you, but you can't see through the side of this one. So, um, but I will go over to that other camera and just kind of show you. You, you. And actually, I don't know. We, we maybe could have, I don't know. I should have maybe looked at the side. But I do think that you're going to have a lot more space, like, like negative space in there, and be able to see the pine cones a little bit better, even though it looks right now like it's kind of, I might have gone a little too much. I was looking from the top and 
I don't know. I, I think we're good. It's definitely less than that first blank. Um, that one had quite a bit in there. <clears throat> All right, so let's get our little teaspoons and things put away. Oh, did I do the wrong? Shoot. I totally did the wrong one. Let's add a <laughs> shoot. They come in threes, people. They come in threes. That's the third one. Third mess up. So um, I forgot to put the right one in. So we're going to add a little bit. So we'll get a little bit of that effect in there. Whoops. So we got a little bit of the, the blue stuff. It's kind of the same idea. I think it's the same color with just some blue ones in there. So let's see, we got our reds and our pinks or our purples, I mean. Okay. I was so worried about the that tip that I, I forgot to, I forgot we were, we were doing two different ones. All right, Hugh, have a good one. Thanks for coming out. Carol's, Carol, just Carol. How's it going? Yeah, 1980s roller skates, that's true. Uh, one thing while we're waiting, so what I'm waiting for is for this stuff to kind of warm up a little bit. Oh, we're, we're actually there, jeez. Good thing I checked. I'm gonna dump some pine cones in. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen it on my channel, I uh, one of the other things that I've decided to start doing I know a lot of people really don't like, this is probably not the, the crowd to, to, that's going to really care too much about this necessarily, but um, I know some people don't really want to watch the replays of the live streams. Uh, they don't really have time and they don't, they're not interested in that and want uh, shorter you know, videos. So one of the things that I'm also going to start doing, and, and I already just posted one today, is uh, an edited down version of of the live streams and especially now that we're we're doing the the saturday you know so the new schedule is wednesday is the same and we're going to do some resin casting and then saturdays i'm going to be turning you know a project made out of the stuff that we cast on wednesday so <clears throat> um but I, what i'm doing is trying to edit down into a pretty manageable like definitely shooting for sub 30 minutes um but even less if i can get it down to like 15 or so that's what i'm kind of shooting for on these um so they're just like an edited version of the live streams so you know you're not going to get all the tips and all that kind of stuff but if you just want to see the project kind of come together um, it's a short condensed version and even if you were at the live streams you know you might find it interesting to kind of see how it was i i well I'm, i i make videos so i i kind of find this a little bit interesting but um you might kind of find it interesting to see how the live stream got transformed into a video um now this is not replacing you know these are sub sub quality compared to like a normal video obviously because i'm dealing with the cameras that i have for streaming and they're only so good regular videos are definitely going to be better quality and i'm not I'm, we're, we're rolling through on those we're, we're making more of those too but bumping up the content across the board but i thought that'd be kind of a neat way to to start doing things hopefully other people that don't want to watch the two hour version uh, we'll, we'll get to enjoy it so we got two blanks ready for pressure let's get this lid off uh, so that, that video went up today and tentatively, I'm going to try to post those, those edited down versions of the live stream and I'm not taking away the, the full replays or anything like that. I don't have any plans to do that as of right now. So, um, you know, if you want to see every detail on the replays, then those are still up there. But if you also just want to get the condensed version... Um, I'm planning to post those on Wednesdays, the next, you know, so um, today's Wednesday. And so those are the, from last week's Shamrock Blanks streams. Should 
should have put this in the, we're gonna make a bubbly extra cup here. One of the problems with doing, one, one of the reasons why I, I oftentimes don't, um, like I'll, I'll dump resin a lot of times is because I'm using Alumilite clear which requires pressure and like I'm not going to waste a pressure pot for this so it'll be kind of a bubbly blank that we'll get later on down the road for anybody that doesn't know uh, Alumilite clear slow and, and just their the normal Alumilite clear uh, they have such a short working time that you have to pressurize them to get rid of the air bubbles and so there's going to be air bubbles in this blank, but that's cool. We'll save it and do something with it. Better than wasting it, I guess. Bubbly blanks are better than trash blanks, right? Never thought about it that way, I guess. We'll set this aside for now. All right, so let me stop and see what's going on up here. Yeah, so what I would recommend, let me stop real quick and switch to a different view. What I would recommend, if you don't have a pressure pot, I would, I would give Liquid Diamonds a shot. Um, it's a pretty good one. And so it's got about a 45 minute working time. It turns pretty well and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a pretty thin viscosity, which I, helps a lot with the air bubbles. Um, so the difference is, you know, you're kind of watching me just, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sitting there stirring it really, you know, lightly or anything like that because I have a pressure pot and I don't have to worry about air bubbles that I'm creating uh, while I'm stirring it, mixing it, pouring it, doing all that stuff. Um, but, you know, if you get a, a, a thin, thinner viscosity resin with a longer working time and you stir it fairly slowly, um, that's kind of the recipe to, to not really have to um, use a pressure pot. Now, I really just recommend getting one if, you know, you get into resin casting and, and you find that, you know, you're going to keep doing it. Um, I recommend just getting one because there's certain situations that you just, there's nothing that you can do. Uh, there's no other way to get rid of the air bubbles unless you have a pressure pot. So, uh, and I think that if you, once you have one, just toss everything in there and you're not going to have to ever worry about bubbles. However, while you're just kind of, you know, getting started and feeling your way around, um, liquid diamonds is a good one, uh, I think for, for that specific purpose. So let me in Turner's warehouse is where you can get that. Let me get you a link real quick here. I think it's on sale too at Turner's right now. So give that a shot. It's extremely clear. Uh, it's a very clear resin when, uh, Casey and I were just doing a podcast and he asked if I do, if I've ever done label blanks. And, uh, I mentioned, you know, when I do label blanks, that's actually the resin I use because it's so clear, um, that, and it's thin, that thin viscosity that it's a really good one to use for that kind of stuff. So let me grab you a link real quick and give it a shot. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, most people are pretty happy with uh, liquid diamonds. Uh, another one that I use a lot, on, especially on the stream, is Amazing Clearcast from Alumilite. Or, well, I should say, uh, yeah, Amazing Clearcast Plus. Sorry, this the they, they've changed their labels like five times in the last year. Um, ACC Plus, a lot of people call it. Um, I use that quite a bit for for certain things, and and that one specifically has a lot of UV inhibitors, so it will resist yellowing for for quite a while. The problem with that is for, for your case is it's super thick viscosity. Like it's like kind of, especially when it's cooler in my shop. I mean, it's like mixing up molasses really. I don't really recommend that because there's, it's really difficult to stir it and not introduce a bunch of air bubbles. So the thinner viscosity ones are, I, I find a little bit better for that kind of situation uh, with no, no pressure pot. All right. So hopefully that'll, that'll kind of help out a little bit. Yeah, it gets it's you can't cast a gigantic blank with that stuff. It's a normal epoxy. Um, I've I've made two inch. I would say I would agree. I mean, you can make a brick, you know, that's like three quarter or one inch thick. Um, that's totally fine. Um, two inch handle blanks like this, two inch by about six, six and a half. It's it gets warm um, at that point, and then 
you also have to watch out. I mean, if it's 90 degrees in your shop, I, you know, I would probably not <laughs> recommend casting the, that, those big blocks of it, the two inch, but I think I've even done maybe a four inch pipe PVC pipe that might've worked. Um, uh, but you know, it, it does have a, it exotherms hotter. That's, that's why I like Alumalite clear slow. I mean, it's just, it's so, you can do so many different things with it. And on top of all that, you can cast a bucket of it and it's not going to overheat. So, yeah, I don't know if we were talking about, it. so same thing with, um, ACC plus it, you know, <clears throat> most of the epoxies are going to fall into this category where, you know, maybe two inches by like five or six is kind of that upper limit. Like the, you know, like this, this kind of handle size square block or like a two inch PVC pipe probably don't, you may be able to get away with maybe a three inch PVC pipe by five inches tall, but you're starting to push the limits a little bit with, with most of those epoxies, the only epoxies. So the only other ones that I know of, so Illumilite clear slow, you can pour huge amounts, gigantic blanks, um, get, you know, like gallons kind of almost at, at one. Well, yeah, probably gallons at once. Um, and the, the other way to do it is obviously pour multiple layers. Um, so you'd pour a little bit, let it kind of cure and then do this, but there's a lot of reasons not to do that in some cases. So if you're going for big pours, um, Illumilite clear slow, you can also use the, I don't know how much you can pour at once, but the, the, dang it, what is the, the what is it called? Stone coat has one that can be poured pretty big. It's not, I don't think it's it, thick pours, maybe what it's called. Um, I don't think it's going to give you as deep, as big a blank as Illumilite clear slow, but it's a little bit better. Um, the other one is, is, uh, entropy resins. They're, they're, uh, CCR clear casting resin CCR by entropy. They have a slower set and you can pour pretty gigantic things. Total boat probably has something too. I just, I, I've never used any of the total boat ones. So yeah. So anyway, okay. So we, we answered that question hopefully. Okay. So we got two more guys, two more to go. Pretty excited. Nope. Oh, I just totally knocked that over. Okay. Two more to go. Number four and number five. All right. So we got pink. Super cool. We're going to use the sticky sweet glitter. Sticky sweet. And I, I did a pretty good job estimating the amount of resin too. I'm happy with that. Uh, these are going in one and a half, one and a half inch PVC pipes. We're using slow set clear and we're doing, let's see here, 200 grams, 100 times two. So 100 part A, 100 part B. And let's see here, number four, number five, candied yams is the glitters, the orange one that we're using. Oh. Wrong camera. Candy Dams for this one and Sticky Sweet for the pink. Okay, so again, 200 grams, 100 grams times two, one and a half inch PVC pipe, and slow set clear. Okay, so we got our notes ready. We know that the game plan is. Um, I'm also going to write down, so one of the things that I forgot to do is go back into these two purples and put what we put in there. So we, we did a teaspoon of don't be jelly. And then we did, technically we ended up having to add a little bit more. So we got about three quarters of a teaspoon of, of glitter in there. So we'll do a little bit less on one of these, maybe the orange one. We'll do just like, you know, a quarter to half teaspoon of glitter. And then we'll do, we'll load it up on the pink one. We'll, we'll do that again. Let's see what we got. All right. Tim's here. What's up, man? Speedy. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so let's uh, get this out of the way. Get another one of those plastic mixing cups. Do I have any that are clean? I do. I can reuse that. ought to be good. It's cleaned out. No debris. Okay, so zeroed out. We're gonna go 200 grams. So again, this is for 
this is going to be enough resin for two blanks. 200 grams of part A. I don't know what I lost my count. Ninety-two, six, ooh, one ninety-nine. Are you out of your mind? Okay, two hundred. Zero that out. Go with our part B. You're not too late. We still got one more pair to go. It's been a it's been a wild day, Jeff. <laughs> Technical difficult. Well, mostly it's just me being stupid. Uh, I ran out of batteries on the the microphone. That was fun. So we got a different mic going on. And then I the first one I we were supposed to do a Patreon hangout and that was supposed to be private or you know for patrons only. And then I I, I put the wrong code in and went public on YouTube. <laughs> I was like. Everyone's like, what's going on? It, it's been kind of a mess today. But it's okay, because I'm going to Mexican food tonight. Tableside guac. We're doing it. Thanks to Lori, we'll be able to afford... Maybe we can get two tableside guacs. Thanks to Lori. And thanks to everybody, actually. Lori's been super generous today. I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys for, for like the, the first one when it was like the wrong stream and uh, for the microphone difficulties and every other problem that I've had today. I appreciate you guys' patience and, uh, and gentle ribbing, making fun of me, <laughs> playing with me. Uh, it's been fun. All right, Tim, have a good one. Evening traffic. Blah. That's no fun. I also get to avoid evening traffic because I'm not driving home tonight. Luckily, I stay late later than the... We don't have a lot of traffic here. I live kind of in the middle of nowhere, so... It's quite amazing how much traffic there is, though, for... We live in a place that has, like, a, no population. There's still people driving everywhere. I don't know. Really, one day... I'm looking forward to getting a house with a shop on site. The housing market's not helping us at all with that, but someday maybe. Then I won't have to drive. So we need uh, 200 grams in this guy for one of the pipes. So what have you been up to, uh, Mr. Speedy? you guys don't follow speedy's woodshop on instagram he, he's always posting some fun stuff over there make sure to give him a follow all right so again i'm going to do that little trick with the the toothpick we're just going to add a little bit of orange orange dye oh, i think i nailed it this time so we're going for that like very light color Yeah, some things just, yeah, some days nothing goes right, but you know what, though? It's cool, because, like, you know, sometimes, like, you have a bad day in the shop, like, things aren't working, like, this isn't so bad. Okay, so we had some technical difficulties, but I'm hanging out with some friends, we're having fun making some casting projects, like, whatever. But some days in the shop, when things, when you gotta, especially when you gotta get stuff done, that's when I'm like, ugh. The temper flares, things get thrown. Words are cursed. <laughs> so that's pretty light, you know? So just adding a little bit, you can, so, you know, some people use alcohol inks and, and like there's a lot of alcohol inks where you could get this same thing. And, and again, they work differently. Like you could just keep adding alcohol ink and it's never gonna get any darker than say this, you know, in some cases, it's just barely tinted. Um, but, you know, if you already have alumalite dyes, you don't need to go with something else. Now, the one advantage I will say for alcohol inks is sometimes, you know, you may want like a specific kind of shade of orange. And the only way to get that is to mix dyes together. But if you're trying to do it on the fly, you're going to add too much dye, right? So the, the advantage that alcohol inks have is they, they 
you can kind of like get the right shade of a lighter color a little bit you know like right out of the bottle like it's already been tinted like you can like there's no way to get pink um really i mean i guess if you just go super light with the red but you can get all kinds of different shades of pink with an alcohol ink but you don't really have that option because you can't lighten you know the 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 red in some cases so just just some food for thought like the differences between it but i think for most people the the, the alumilite dyes they do everything kind of so it's it's pretty good what am i doing here so we got pink so oh we're you know here's pink so um the other way you can go is we can add some fluorescent pink we can add a, a you know a fluorescent color so let's try that uh, you always want to shake these guys up yeah we finally got things going on the patron chat appreciate you guys joining the fun for that too so there we go just a little drop of the the fluorescent pink if you want you know if you're if you're going for a kind of highly transparent now if you aren't if you want to go for more add a little bit more the fluorescents don't really get super opaque usually but they are you know more opaque than you know than just like orange or red or yellow those are super transparent from alumilite in in alumilite dyes these ones are kind of like semi translucent but still uh, you know pretty see through okay so we got that we added a little bit of that we're going to get our we're going to load up we're going to do a teaspoon of the pink let's do a teaspoon what do you guys think about that Um, you could also measure if you, if you really needed to be super accurate for some reason. I don't know if this is really worth doing, but you could weigh your glitter. Um, that might work in like larger batches where, you know, you want a kind of a specific look. And if you've nailed it down, you know, and you know how much weight, like that may be useful. But I think for the most part, just doing like scoops or whatever is good enough with glitter. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. What do you guys think of that? Let me get in the middle. How about that? Looking good. Okay, and then we're gonna go with this kind of lighter orange over here. Um, I'm gonna let's let's go with the the quarter teaspoon and kind of sneak up and see what what a quarter teaspoon looks like. I'm gonna look at the side this time. I didn't really do that last time. We got red. We got fluorescent pink. Okay all this stuff put away and got our uh again so this one's uh candy dms so let's do a quarter teaspoon and let's see what we got here that might be enough yeah that actually i think that's going to be enough for what I was going for. So I'm going to bring this over to the, the other camera. So I, I, I want to be, you know, I want to really be able to see through this thing a lot more. And so that's a quarter teaspoon for 200 grams of this stuff. And, and different glitters, you know, you can't necessarily say that they all work the same. But for these ones, you know, you should get pretty similar results. Quarter teaspoon for 200 grams should give you something some similar to that, I would say. <laughs> you don't want the pink one for the mystery box <laughs> so we're at about 92 we should, we're probably good on uh, being able to pour it but we'll wait just a couple more seconds here um, this one's probably a little bit lower temperature it's kind of a wider cup yeah a little bit lower so i'm going to get a few pine cones in here I really love mini pine cone blanks. They're really fun. Have, have, has anybody else done some mini pine cone blanks? And uh, how, how, what did you think about it? Uh, lately, I guess. What type of blanks did you make? All that good stuff. 
<laughs> nice new concrete new shops or the concrete at the new shop that's cool curtis yeah what that weather Jeez. two hundred dollars of silicone oh man yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I've done that too. Uh, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Okay, so I think these guys are probably uh, should be. We should be at pretty much. Yeah, we're at ninety-five. So we'll start pouring these guys in here. Okay, add a little bit more. The only reason I'm doing it this way, no, normally when I do pine cone blanks like this, I usually just pour the resin in. Um, what I'm trying to do is, and I don't know if it matters or not, but I'm just trying to make sure that the glitters don't just get like kind of stuck on the top. You know, if this pipe was empty and just full of pine cones, I would just worry that maybe the, like the glitters could get just stuck on the top mostly. I, I don't know if that's a thing, a problem or not, but... That's why I'm doing it this way. Just wanted to mention that. If I'm just pouring like, you know, mica powder colors in, I would just dump it. Uh, and I actually like that. If you're going for color swirls, uh, mini pine cones are great because you don't really, uh, a lot of times I don't find, I don't really like pouring vertical pen blanks and stuff, you know, trying to do color swirl type stuff especially pen blanks. Like you're trying to pour it into a three quarter inch PVC pipe. It's just not fun. I'd much rather do it in a brick mold style, like, you know, like a five by six or whatever. Um, but, uh, and, and the reason is it's just harder for me, partly because I, I haven't done it enough, but it's harder for me to, to know what, what kind of swirls we're going to get, you know, and, and get good kind of swirl patterns. Um, but with the pine cones, if you just swap back and forth, the pine cones distribute the resin colors really well throughout the blank, you know, um, because it's it's kind of dripping over all these different kind of angles. So it's kind of a cool uh, thing, you know, using mini pine cones, you can get some really cool color swirling mixtures, marbling, however you want to call it, <clears throat> without any work. <laughs> or technique or anything, you know, just dump it in there. All right, so we got these guys ready. Let's pop another pressure pot open. And uh, just to let you know, these guys, so they're like one and a half inch or so uh, PVC pipes by, or, you know, somewhere around six inches tall. I would, pro and, and the shop right now, it's 70, 71 degrees in here. I would probably leave these in for about three hours in the pressure pots. Um, you could pull it into, I usually just, for something that size, I'll probably give it three hours. Um, for brick molds and things like that, I, I, I'll, I'll pull them in two. I usually don't pull um, the castings out with, with a Lumalite Clear Slow. Uh, less than two hours, typically. Um, so just, just to kind of let you know, um, the 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 demold time is typically going to be somewhere between two and four hours, and then in some cases, if it's just a very small amount of resin, like let's say, well, I even do this for pen blanks, just because it ends up being a little easier to to, to demold them to get them out of the pipes. Um, so if I'm just pouring, you know, vertical pen blanks with uh, Alumalite Clear Slow, so the three quarter inch PVC, I usually leave them in overnight. Uh, with Alumalite Clear Slow, you don't have to. It's not like it's necessary, but uh, it'll give it a little bit more time to to harden up, and they just kind of pop out a little bit easier with those smaller pipes. Um, but typically, two hours to four hours uh, is is the range uh, that you want to leave it in there. And that kind of compares. This is another reason why I like Alumalite Clear Slow because I can get it out of the pressure pot in like two hours 
Whereas many of the epoxies, you're talking, you know, overnight, like eight hours minimum for most of these things. And some of them, in some cases, I mean, it could go 24 hours or more um, before you can even get it out of the pressure pot, which is inconvenient. So, you know, unless you can utilize that resin to make a lot, I'm talking like a lot of blanks at once, um, which sometimes can't be done, uh, you know, it just, I don't know. I, I can get, I feel like I can get more done with um, Alumilite Clear than, than many of the, the slower setting resins that, that take a while longer. But it's up to you. I mean, it just depends on, some of it has to do with personal preference, I would say, or uh, I've been using Alumilite Clear and Clear Slow for so long, I'm used to it. So it kind of annoys me when I have to wait overnight for things. Um, Kind of like I'm biased in that sense, I would say. I'm just used to the way things work. Um, but, you know, whatever type of thing you're doing, I mean, that's a consideration to think about is what is the working time? How long does it need to stay in the pressure pot? And how does that work with, you know, what I want to be doing? So just a few few things to think about. I And I cover a lot of these types of things. Like, when you know, a lot of people ask me which resin they should use. Um, and I cover a lot of this stuff in my ebook. Um, that's I think that's one of the most important sections in that book um, some different considerations about how to you know narrow down there's so many resins out there um, but I kind of narrowed it down to like what are the most important things so that book's e available on the it's an ebook available on my website if that might be something for a beginner uh, if you're just getting it started with resin um, that's who that's for so just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I think there's links floating around in the chat thing that pop up every once in a while. And there's always links down in the show notes to the ebook uh, for anybody that's interested. So let's see here. Let me scroll up and see what's going on with everybody. Send it to Jim, the pink one. <laughs> no, that's mean. Uh, so what do I make with these blanks? I actually have a very good answer for you on that. Where did I put the thing? Shoot. Well, oh, there it is. I actually had a, a very specific project um, that that drove me to to make these. So my table saw, so you know, the fence on my table saw has a handle, and you know, okay, it's neat. It's ugly. <laughs> I can make a better one. So that's what we're going to be doing with the red one, the first one that we made. Um, we're going to make a, a, a handle out of it. And so it's a pretty simple project uh, on the lathe. Uh, and I think I didn't I didn't see if anybody had any objections to my my work holding method. But so I went and bought a bolt. And uh, so I'll just glue that into the blank. You drill a hole in the blank once we get it ready. Um, glue that in and I've got myself, you know, a handle and I'll turn it on the lathe. Probably not going to be all fancy or anything. I'll probably just try to match this shape. It's comfortable. Um, but that's what, uh, you know, I had in mind for my blank. Now, a couple other things that you can do is, you know, you can make bottle stoppers, um, you know, honey dipper handles, any kind of a handle like that. Bottle openers. I got a few different um, things. Mallets. I got a... This is why I don't really sell anything because now I can share. So this is actually a coffee tamper. You could use a blank like that for, for that, for the handle on that. This is a mallet that I made with a similar size blank. That's snakeskin in there. Um, this is a bottle opener. It's got a piece of faux burl in there and a, a pin of an F-35 jet. It's kind of hard to see on this angle, but um, bottle opener. Uh, I should have a honey dipper over here somewhere. Here's a honey dipper. Peter Brown just did a honey dipper with some of my honeycomb. It was pretty cool. <clears throat> like literally last night I saw, I saw the video. I think he posted it then. So, the, you know, pizza cutter, uh, ice cream scoop. Here's another one. You can do an ice cream scoop. Uh, tool handles. I've done screwdrivers. Um... I don't know if, I mean, this kind of qualifies, I guess. It's a little bit different, but you can make something, that, you know, like this that, you don't. I mean, obviously we didn't cast something in it, but um, you could make something like a, a little, you know, random 
bottle or something. Random little art piece kind of thing. Anybody else have any ideas? There's tons of different handle type things that you can make. Garden tool handles, yeah. Yeah, so lots of, lots of different things. Uh, and a lot, you know, the, the turning, like Turner's Warehouse, you know, they have all these project kits. So, <clears throat> you know, they just sell you the hardware and then you just, you know, cast the blank. And, you know, the way these things work, most of them all kind of use the same. Now, I'm doing something very specific, but um, many of these kits, they call them, <clears throat> for, you know, bottle stoppers. Oh, I, I guess I didn't even show you a bottle stopper. So, like, if you're a wine lover you can buy a little bottle stopper things so you just buy that little hardware piece but most of these kits use kind of the same hardware size and everything um, so you know i mean you could technically swap out the mallet for for a bottle stopper It's not going to line up with my my blank but you know all of these things you know a lot of them use the same kind of hardware so it's just a kit with um you know a stem and so you just turn whatever you want it's kind of fun lots of different little project things you can make I'm trying to think if there's anything else that i've <clears throat> i've made like this um you know once you get out of the you know the kit stuff where you got to go buy a piece of hardware like you know like this stuff because you know you get kind of roped into some of these things and uh, and you got to buy that but um, one thing that i can kind of think of is you can make your own screwdriver handle um you know to like tool handles and different th ty types of things like that <clears throat> Now, I actually sil made a silicone mold of a, of a screwdriver for this, but, you know, I mean, you can take basically the same idea. This is just an exact copy, but you could turn yourself a, a handle, and then this is just one of those, um, you know, screwdriver bit things that holds its magnetic that would go into a, a drill driver, and I just glued it in there. So you can make your own screwdrivers and things, or chisels, you know. I don't know. I'm just throwing out all kinds of fun ideas that you can do. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Gear, yeah, gear shift knobs. That's actually a project that I need to update. I don't like the way that I made that one that I did uh, earlier, like about a year ago or so. I want a new one. <clears throat> Would a Lumilite clear slow be suitable for a turning tool handle? 12, yeah, totally. Um, I would say it's more suitable than others. The only issue is you got to fit it in, you know, some sort of a pressure pot. Um, another way you could go is maybe deep pour on that. I don't know. There's you get you run into some issues though with you know what are you trying to do? Because if it's just like, you know, you add a little bit of orange dye or something like that, that's one thing. But if you're trying to do like color swirls and all this stuff, kind of hard because you want it. I don't know. It, it kind of depends, but you could use a bunch of different types of resin. Just depends on the pressure pot thing. Uh, if you have a five gallon pot, you should be okay. <clears throat> or have a buddy that's got one at least. I don't know how tall they are. Yeah, 15. If you got a five gallon pressure pot, I think you'd be fine. You maybe wouldn't get a six. Uh, Maybe not 16 inch, but somewhere between 12 to 16, 12 to 15, you could get, I think. Beer tap handle, that's a good one. <clears throat> Did someone say beer? Garden tools, yeah. Yeah, and you can put it on its side, um, any pressure pot. I actually have a, a, like a mount thing. I, I, this thing's full right now, so I can't do it, but um, <clears throat> the five gallon pots are pretty heavy. You gotta kinda support them somehow, but. <clears throat> I need a drink. My throat's dry. I've been talking for since two o'clock and it's been hectic. Nah. <clears throat> uh, I sell aluminum honeycomb on my website, actually. Get you a link. Sell three different sizes. Uh, there we go. 
it's under the resin casting. So I'm just going to link to the resin casting supplies. It's, it's on there, but there's three different sizes. I got two inch and then two that are like pen blank thickness, <clears throat> like one inch. And then within the one inch, I have uh, one eighth cell and, and one quarter inch cell. And then the two inch stuff ha has a one quarter cell only. I don't know which, where am I at here? There we go. I have like four YouTube things open. So there's a link to that if you want to check it out. Yeah, cabinet knobs. Um, rubber gasket type thing. Slide them on the gear shift. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about that. I, I bought, I ended up buying, they have, there's a hardware kit that you can buy that has like every... <clears throat> like an adapter thing that in all the you know whatever size you need i gotta be honest those things are super expensive though those kits for that it's kind of tough it's hard to justify mm -hmm. yeah definitely cabinet knobs. i guess you can't see these things <clears throat> i have some wooden ones here but yeah you can make all kinds of different stuff so all right guys i think we'll shut it down i gotta get a couple things done in the shop before i go to Mexican food, but dinner is coming up pretty soon here. Uh, but again, I, I appreciate you guys all joining the fun tonight. Uh, and I, again, I appreciate you, your patience on a day of craziness with uh, me screwing up the, <laughs> the first one and then this and then the microphone. But I got the microphone charging, so we should be good to go on the next one. So again, here's the, here's the deal. So we're doing Wednesday streams as casting which we did today. And then on Saturday, we will be turning uh, you know, the handle. Uh, so we'll, we'll be working on that project. So, uh, but be advised. So Wednesdays at 3 p.m., uh, Saturdays at noon. All right. And so for, we just had a discussion on Patreon. Coming up, we're going to be changing things up and we're going to do a weekly Q&A for patrons only. Uh, just if anybody, you know, wants to hang out. But if anybody has any questions or issues, um, we're going to be doing something weekly. Now, the problem is we need to figure out when we're doing that. So some of these times may adjust slightly, but as of right now, until we, you know, until further notice, Wednesday streams are at 3 p.m. Pacific time and then uh, Saturdays at noon Pacific time. Uh, so I'm excited to, to get, man, I, I swear, I, you know, I've been using that table saw for 15 years probably, and I'm looking at it like, eh, this handles, eh, whatever. I should make a new one, you know, I can make that, but I never got around to it. So I'm excited to, to switch that up. Um, yeah. So uh, make sure to check out that video if you wanna see the, the shamrock pen uh, that I just made, the condensed version of last week's live streams, basically. Um, I just posted that today. Um, so anyway, I think that's about it. And I think we should have a video hopefully this Sunday also um, i'm really trying to get back into the the weekly normal video on sunday schedule um, but so be looking for that but i will see you guys first on saturday <clears throat> throat is dry losing voice so anyway guys i appreciate all the super chats awesome colors that you picked i can't wait to see how these things turn out uh, big thank you to, to lori uh, it's so generous. I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the help while things are going crazy on the stream. That, that was nice of you. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you have a great evening tonight. Get in the shop, do something fun, and I will see you guys on Saturday. Have a great weekend. Well, I guess I'll see you on the weekend. Have a great rest of the week first. Then I'll see you on the weekend. All right, guys? Take it easy. <laughs>